Hello everyone and welcome to another great episode of the Love Fruit Podcast and today I'm joined by a good friend of mine and that is Tina Chouse uh, who's oh. currently in, yeah, do you like how I pronounce it? Yeah, that's a good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, Tina's uh, from, uh, or right now, based in California yeah. and she's someone that's been, that's had a tremendous uh, interest in the story of healing uh, with the raw vegan diet and with raw food so we want to explore that and, and learn more about that that process that journey and um, Tina would you like to introduce yourself a bit more and, and let people know a bit more about um, who you are and you know where you come from things like that mm-hmm. well um, people know me as Tina Seuss but actually my last name is Chose it's Hungarian I'm first generation American and I, I grew up in the United States and I grew up in Northern California in Silicon Valley in the Bay Area. So where internet was invented wow. and um, yeah, I've been, I used to be a really avid tennis player. I was an athlete my whole life. Um, I also became a fashion designer at the age of 22 i started studying and i moved to italy and i lived in europe actually for 11 years um i worked as a designer in italy for a few years and then i moved to spain and i had a huge kind of break in my life where i really really started um i stopped giving my power away and asking other people what i should do in life after this really big intuitive experience and um, started living more from my heart. And that's where I really got into like fasting and cleansing and raw foods. Um, I also had gotten sick during that time. Um, and I think we'll probably get into that because that's like the main sure. experience of why I came to raw foods. Sure. So, so I guess before we get into that, like were you brought up on a, any kind of alternative or healthy lifestyle or was it, was, did you kind of, start off in like conventional kind of lifestyle or you know tell us tell us a little bit about that yeah i um grew up i guess with i mean it's it's sad to call it the sad diet but i mean like we <laughs> ate we ate a lot of um we ate a lot of home cooked meals but we ate everything i mean we ate we ate quote unquote well for eating everything i mean we, sure. um we never were deprived, but I ate like me and, you know, I ate every meat, I ate everything. Like, and we also had the whole spectrum from like fine dining to like TV dinners and um, also, you know, fast food when we wanted it, you know, and, um, but my, I mean, my parents really brought me up with like, quote unquote, good cuisine, but it was Mm -hmm. very meat oriented. Yes. Right. And, um, and did you kind of make a gradual transition towards like a healthier diet or was it more of an overnight thing or, or how did it, how did that happen for you? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I init- I think I probably, if you, if you think about it, I, it was gradual, but um, I, I experimented initially with the zone diet when I was around 20 years old. To oh, me, wow. that was like, yeah, it was like I was an athlete and I was um, advised right, right. to have like a hand sized portion of protein, protein at every, you know, at meal. And that's so I, funny. I, that's so funny because I remember the zone diet and like yeah. I just remember it because I was like kind of a kid at the time, but I remember my mom having the book. And I remember, I remember that kind of thing you're talking about, like measuring out different things and all that. Yeah. Yeah. He was always like, look at the palm of your hand and make sure you have a piece of meat that size, you know, and <laughs> like have a portion of vegetables. And um, so it was, it was like the first time I really got more conscious about my food. Um, sure. You know, as an athlete, I could kind of just eat almost like what I wanted. And as a younger body too, I could, I was yeah. so active when at my peak, I was training like five hours a day. So oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. And then um, that was after college. And then, um, so what happened was like to, to, it kind of was overnight in the sense of when I dropped meat, it was an intuitive experience. And I was working at this 
you know, restaurant. I was working at a fine dining steakhouse actually. Uh And um, all of a sudden, you know, I was reading Gandhi at the time and I was getting more introspective and like, what's the meaning of life and like all this stuff. And one day I just like came to the work and I saw this huge cow on the, this, this table, like, you know, the butcher block and there, the yeah. whole cow. And it just, something in my mind clicked and yeah. meat was easy. Like I it just like, I just dropped it. Uh-huh. Um, and the next day I just wanted fresh fruits and vegetables, but like, I didn't, I didn't think of myself as a vegetarian. So this yeah. is kind of answering your question. The meat thing was overnight, but um, my parents were worried that I would get the right vitamins. I have, my dad's a doctor. So, um, I felt like I had to know what I was doing and explain it and, you know, research. So I went to the library for a month and like, I just researched every type of vegetarian diet. He's like, since when are you vegetarian? And I was like, I'm not vegetarian. I just lost my, (laughs) my scent and my taste for meat. I just don't want meat. And then, um, actually that, that was key, like doing all that research and seeing all the types of things and hearing people's balls. uh, I I just was, I felt like a hypocrite if I stayed eating eggs and dairy after everything I knew. And I just went be, you know, I plant-based overnight. I've never called myself a vegan, even though I embodied it for ethical reasons. Um, just to give my, cause, because it was such an intuitive thing that happened that, I almost felt like it wasn't my choice that it happened. So I was like, if somebody can, you know, something bigger than me can give me that consciousness, it can also be taken away at any moment. Sure. So, and did, did, what, do you remember any of the books that you came across at that point? Or the yeah. Stuff you were I have this like re- really old seventies one. Cause it was the library <laughs> in my town and it's like this vegan association pamphlet. Oh, book. Wow. And, um, and then I, oh, the book that really got me was, um, Diet for a New America mm. by Bask you know, Baskin Robbins. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was really good. Cause I didn't have movies. I didn't have documentaries. I didn't, sure. it wasn't YouTube yeah. yet, you know, so I did it old school in the library and <laughs> my intuition. And then I loved YouTube when it came out cause I could just look up so many things and I didn't even meet another vegan for four years at all and I so so you said is it overnight like that transition was a month from like everything to vegan but then like within my vegan path yeah I call it a path because um some people are black and white like they're like you're never gonna go back and like if you do you're not a vegan well, I had probably like three points where I tried eggs and dairy again, you know, sure. Sure. Um, because of different reasons. Like I had to work on my emotional side and I was coping, you know, or I lost my faith in goodness, you know, and I didn't wow. want to be healthy. I had a, a really hard point in life at one point. And then wow. also another point I thought, oh, I'm getting too dogmatic about health. Like maybe sure. I should embrace this and be more flexible so i would get it like when they throw it away from the <laughs> the store yeah you know, right. expiration date so i'm not actually like, buying it but then that was the first time i ever tried it and then um and then another point was when i really was going raw actually like oh. and i didn't know about eating enough calories and sure. I wasn't eating enough. And I think I was going through a lot of detox, but then on yeah. top of that, with not eating enough, the detox was really strong and my sickness came back and I'll talk about that more, but it's like, yeah, I got well, let's go back to the point where you first went vegan in the first place. And yeah, it, did you, um, you know, it doesn't sound like you were doing it for health reasons. It was intuitive for you. And did you notice any changes when you went vegan? Anything in particular that happened, or was it just kind of? Did you feel the same, or? Well, I'll say I went vegetarian okay. for intuitive reasons. I went vegan definitely for mental ethical reasons. Right, right, like, right. So it was de- it, the the switch was different because to to vegetarian it was easy. Right. My intuition just knew, and then like. Yeah, the other one was more intuitive. Like this, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Like I feel like I learned all this stuff. Sure. And then, and then, but it was more of like I had to work at it. Yeah. So I just, 
the the differences I noticed number one right off the bat were just I felt self confidence and I felt like this surge of um, like I was seizing the day like I was really living life for me wow. even though you do it for the animals I felt like I had this um, surge of like well being like I um, was finally living life for me and not doing what other people told me to do wow. you know. Because like everybody had always told me you have to eat meat to um, make muscles. You, yeah. you, have, you can't be an athlete and not eat meat. And um, that's what I was told. And then um, just, you know, it, it was just like freeing. Like I had this, it was very like the first things that I felt were like just this happiness and, and contentment inside and um, like an empowerment feeling. And then I noticed I, it, initially and i was lucky because when i went vegan i moved to italy and they have a lot of whole foods so and then i yeah. was also making my own food i didn't have like packaged vegan stuff so so i lost a, um even though i was an athlete like i kind of trimmed down the way i'd always wanted to in life like like i was like whoa this is all i had to do <laughs> <laughs> like, and that's not the case for everyone because you know sure. you may be eating too many calories or you're eating processed vegan foods or whatever's going on or lots of oils and I still ate like oils and things and I felt super good I, I felt really well and um sure. so I noticed that my body kind of adjusted and like lightened up and I and I felt um more alive and of course there was learning curves within the past almost 18 years. So I had to learn true. within the spectrum of veganism, yeah. what, what, and also my body changed to going raw, like what I'm sensitive to, or I, yeah. I could just listen to my body better. Sure. I, I like what you're saying that actually what you, what you were, the things that you encountered were like self-confidence and well, like a surge of well being and stuff. So it wasn't like you had aches and pains and stuff and, digestive problems and all that disappeared it was that it was more like almost a mental emotional side of it that you got yeah. a, a good experience from that's really cool yeah and then like a lightening up of like extra weight and um and I wasn't even I was like super fit at the time when I went because I was training five hours a day but like I um did it make any impact on your training on, on your fitness at all it's funny because I actually stopped the sports side of myself. And it, I think I, it happened when I was injured. So uh -huh. I, I actually stopped training after that and switched to kind of my artistic life and went into design. Oh, it was wow. like at this big transition. Um, so I didn't get to compare, but doing raw vegan, definitely I've noticed the difference in my training because like, and I don't recommend this, but I've ran like a 5k or whatever, and I didn't even really train for it. And I went, <laughs> and I saw everybody like recovering for days after. And like, I was fine the next day, like I wasn't sore at all. <laughs> so I mean, that's it. Definitely the recovery is stronger. The lighter <laughs> one goes, I think on the diet. You found, yeah, you're talking about you found it quite easy to give up meat. What about uh, when you gave up milk and cheese and things at the time and eggs was that did you find that fairly easy as well or did you have any kind of uh, struggles with giving those things up at the time I, I didn't feel like I struggled it but I think I really was authentic with myself about how I wanted to do it so like once I was really decided how I wanted to do it it was uh -huh. easy um, sure. at that period like, because of the times that I did go back, it was more, you know, maybe a bit harder. Um, I, to expand on that, like, I, I'm also like an environmentalist and I'm also, I care about not wasting. Yeah. Um, so I ended up eating what was in my fridge over that, that period of learning and just um, didn't buy it again. So like, right. I didn't just throw everything away. Like, I didn't, you yeah. know. I didn't really feel good about that. And then, um, and then, you know, the health reasons came later. Like that's when I got more in tune with my body and I could see the differences of what the vegan diet and the raw vegan diet would do with my body. So how, how much longer after, so you're at this point, you're in Italy, I think, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. 
I cool. stayed there for four years. Whereabouts? In Milan, Milano. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and you're working as a designer. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, I worked at. Um, I did my stage at. I went to Maran Istituto Marangoni and then um, worked for Missoni. I don't know if you know them. They have like a lot of the '70s style and. All right. Okay. And then I worked for this um, kind of like sports um, firm called Studio Kinarelli. They did all different people like Diodora and Kappa. And, oh, right. Yeah. 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 Those yeah. kind of those brands. Um, and what did you? I, I don't. I don't know what. Like, is the fashion industry is that maybe kind of hard to stay healthy? And I don't know. Like, is it a lot of uh, <laughs> bad habits and stuff? With oh yeah. Out? Yeah, I actually, I actually smoked during that time. Like I had a period right. where I smoked, even though I stayed vegan. Um, it, 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 I was kind of like rejecting my sports life and like entering it. <laughs> it was the first time I was living alone and like, you know, it was Europe and like a lot of people. And I, I, you know, I, I don't want to disclose too much about other people's personal information, but like I grew up around smoking. Um, so I tried it, you know, and then you get hooked and then you're like, fuck, I don't, shoot, I don't want to have this. <laughs> so um, that was like something I had to relate with and learn how to like release and why I was doing it, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, I uh, had to, you know, I had a period where I like tried it and then let it go sure. and, um, it came back one other time in my life. Yeah, right. So, and, and did you find, and at what point did you make a transition to kind of a, towards raw or was it first towards a healthier vegan lifestyle or was it, was it in Italy, was it something that happened there? Was that just intuitive as well or, or anything in particular? Um, so I think about a year or two into vegan, the vegan plant-based bath I um so I, I was going through a harder time and, I, and I, I was working so much that at that period I would go out to restaurants a lot like sure. I would just get the Chinese <laughs> thing you know and that's when I started learning like oh not all the not all plant-based diets are the same because like I didn't go buy packaged stuff so the restaurant one was the version that showed me and that's when I started like kind of gaining weight a little bit and like um I was like okay so this shows me you know like and I didn't really get it till like later about the oils and about the salts like I really had to dive into those individually to see what that does sure. but um I think I started really getting really um aware when I got sick when I got um I was diagnosed with HPV with the cancer strain and it was 2006, so that was four years into my vegan journey. I what you know, like I, obviously I've been in tune with my body because of sports, but like the real health thing really awakened at that period when I, when I got sick, and then they told me it was connected to my immune system, and I had to have right. a strong immune system so it doesn't come back because it can keep coming back; it just stays dormant in your body. And so who wants to have cancer, right? So <laughs> and were you were you offered the treatment? Because I've heard of like people say um, that they were offered a treatment like they were going to burn out the cells or something like that. Is that the kind of thing they were offering at the time? Yeah. So what happened was I tested positive for precancerous cells. Um, so that means they're starting to mutate and stuff and grow. And um, so what happened was they, I think, yeah, and I feel real. I tried to call my hosp my doctor's office, but it was such a case that was long ago that they archived it. But I can't remember the name of the procedure. But I think it was the burning out kind, where they use a laser. Right. And um, I got that treatment, but it's still like, okay, this is your reality. Like you have to live with this. Um, you know, what right. are you gonna do to create a strong immune system so it doesn't come back? And this is with you for the rest. This is your reality. So. Uh, and actually, on a deeper level, it's all of our reality. We yeah. just don't realize, like, you can get cancer, you can get diabetes, yeah. you can get a heart attack. But for me, it was more on my face. And so I, you know, I tried to ask the doctor what to do to create a strong immune system. I didn't really feel like I got good answers, like deep answers. So I yeah. had to start researching on my own. And um, I think that that's when I first heard about I went back and my friend told me about Tony Robbins is like 
um he has like some kind of cd about unleashing your power or like yeah right you know, something like that and he talked about juicing in it yeah and alkalizing the body and how he knew someone with a tumor that reversed it and i was just like what this is the first time i heard that information yeah um so i decided to do a fast on my own without anybody guiding me or anything and it was very organic i you know i was 26 at the time i just was like switching jobs and like i had just got this diagnosis and i knew i wanted to like step into my own power and like learn for myself so i did a three-day water fast uh, and then it kind of it, I, I had strong symptoms and i kind of got afraid i think because i was alone and then i just switched it to the master cleanse for three days and then i did the rest of the days juicing because i was i kept trying to research on internet like about fasting yeah i felt amazing and was that in Italy? Was that in Italy still? Yeah, that was in Italy, and it was like right before I was about to leave. Wow. Yeah, and, and I had um, quit my job, and that's a whole story in itself. But I, I wanted to leave the fashion industry. Yeah. So, yeah. so that was quite a wake up call. Basically, you had kind of got this diagnosis, and um, they told you to improve your immune system, but they didn't really tell you. <laughs> Didn't really he tell told you me to eat yogurt, and I, oh. I think he was just trying to do his best. I was like, I'm, and at the time, I didn't know about like coconut yogurt or almond yogurt or anything. Like, I didn't really know about sure. probiotics, and but that's quite funny. It's like they kind of said, yeah. So now you've got to go and be healthy, but we can't, we can't really help you with that. Yeah, <laughs> he did. He he tried to give me some suggestions, and it's it's so different than if you you know, read, talk, like, talk to Doug Graham or somebody in the hygienic movement was like, yeah, health is created this way. And this is like a wheel you can look at. And you, <laughs> you know, you need air, you need sunshine, yeah, yeah. You need diet, you know, activity, like all these elements. And it's just so logical when you think about it that way. But um, they don't say that. <laughs> right. And I actually used to get sick every winter when I was a kid. My, my, um, I would always get some kind of like throat problem, you know, and the doctors would always say, you need, you, you need a stronger immune system, you know, take yeah. vitamin C, but like, it's always like, take this, you know, yeah, not yeah. how to cultivate it. And so actually after that first fast, I was really working on my throat chakra energetically, like with visualizations yeah. and then also with the fast, the cleanse. And I have not gotten the sa that sickness ever again since then. I would get it every winter. And then that, after that first fast, I haven't gotten that same sickness wow. again. So I, I don't claim that will happen for everyone, but fasting and cleansing are so powerful. They're amazing. I, I want to destigmatize them. I feel sure. like, but I think it's really important to know how and when and why you're doing it and ha be really clear and honest and choose health to do, you know, yeah. do it healthily. Yeah, and, and I was just going to say, it's, it's interesting you brought up Tony Robbins because people see him as like the motivational speaker guy. But I think I well, a, lot of people, a lot of people don't know that, like if you read his first book, he talks about, he basically talks about plant-based diet. He talks about hygiene. One of his teachers was T.C. Fry, the same guy that taught Doug Graham and a lot of these other and, uh, people that wrote Fit for Life. and all. So he's really, he's pretty plugged into all that stuff. Um, whether he still follows it totally I don't know but yeah I've heard people talk about going to his seminars and things and they were everyone was on green juice and stuff like that and oh wow whatever oh like yeah. He, yeah I think he offers it or something sure so you you came across that information fasting and everything what was the next step like where did you go from there well I moved to Spain and I was like living from my heart <laughs> choosing to follow my inner wisdom right. and um i kind of you know it's sad but i had to kind of like break talking to certain loved ones for a bit like not uh -huh. as often be to be able to start hearing my own voice you know like right. i i you know maybe i didn't call my family as often i i needed to do that to find my strength to be able to then hear different things you know afterwards and still maintain my um, yeah. clarity um but i started following um yeah i went to spain and um 
I'm sorry, I kind of lost what the focus well, of the I, was. Yeah, the question was really like, what was the next step after being exposed to information about fasting and starting to uh, incorporate that? What was the next kind of, what did you learn next? Who did you come across? What was the information that you started to look into? Or was it, was it just, as, you're, as you seem to be saying, you just kind of followed your intuition a little bit at this point? Yeah. Um, well, I started seeing different lifestyles and I started um, kind of living a very nomadic and kind of um, quote unquote hippie lifestyle. Um, I'm still a hippie, but <laughs> a lot of people have stigmas with that word. I don't even know what it means really to different people. Um, I, I became um, influenced by my friend who really wanted to live from his heart and he really showed me things were possible he is an amazing artist and so he um i actually that's when i i actually went off the vegan path for the first time right. and i felt i was afraid of being dogmatic like and it's so silly because you don't what i learned from that experience i you know i um we kind of quote unquote foraged food that was going to be thrown away from the supermarkets, like right. different breads that had dairy or egg products in them. Sure. Um, and this is where I just want to be transparent with people. Like I don't have to be this like perfect vegan person who like is a hundred percent and then never, ever, ever tried anything. Sure. I think I learned a lot from these experiences and I'm sorry for like, you know, actually, you know, the pain and I'm not justifying that, but of the animals, but, what I, what I had to learn was that dogmatism isn't healed by doing the opposite action you're judging. Right. It's um, healed by a shift in mentality. And it's healed by um, equanimity and acceptance and non-attachment to what you're doing. So choosing what you're doing without judging others. And I, it's funny, I let fear take control in that moment and and also curiosity. And I, I, I could tell a difference right away. And um, I got, you know, it made you gain weight or get inflammation, be puffier. Um, and that, that's kind of like the main thing. My skin wasn't as clear, I think. Yeah. Um, and my, maybe my energy wasn't as clear, but also I was having, it's interesting, I was having a lot of spiritual awakenings, like um, kind of glimpses and um, sensitivities to subtle realities that maybe not everyone sees so I had a lot of awakening at that time too so it was I think a period I, I lived through and then um I went back because I realized like you know after a while like it took me a little while to get back on you know have to choose like sure. I need to release these eggs <laughs> you know um and I think I came across, you know, um, I think that's when I was like getting back into energy, like tapping into energy and what gives me vitality. That's, that's been a mission of mine, like to really find out what nice. nourishes me energetically, whether it's food, whether it's um, lifestyle habits, like I got into sun gazing, barefoot walking, um, started running again, um, meditating. I got into Vipassana. Um, that was an intuitive call too. Um, and, and then, you know, through, I, you know, I heard, um, I met someone when I was at Burning Man who told, I think it was like around 2007 ish. And I met someone who opened my eyes to like, wow, raw foods exist. And they had this raw food company, um, which kind of went under now, but he was the first person to expose me to the fact that people can live on raw foods. And I read, you know, the, the, um, the scene book, you know, and the scenes. And I like got into Gabriel cousins. I heard about David Wolf. I, I started hearing, um, are you still there? Hello?
Hello. Hey. Oh, oh, hello. Hey. Okay, cool, right. Okay, we had a little bit of a break in the recording there, but we're going to get started into it. So uh, you were going through awakenings, you kind of experimented again with uh, going back to eating animal products for a while and uh, that kind of stuff. And then you went to Burning Man and you met someone that was, that kind of showed you that you could live on a raw diet so maybe tell us a little bit about that experience yeah um I think I I also was a little bit like what what am I doing like I kind of got reawoken from my the h you know the the fact that I have this illness and I was worried I would get sick again so I was like what am I doing and I ended up um I meet, met this person and they they showed they're like yeah you can you know, you can heal with raw foods. You can, you can do all these things. And like, we have this company and we go to this, you know, we're going to the Santa Barbara's raw spirit fest, you know, soon. Do you want to go? And like, I had been, um, uh, I heard some of the other speakers that were going to go there and I was just like, wow. Um, you know, that that would be a dream. And it was like the first time I kind of like opened my possibility in my mind to like, whoa, I don't have to like stay in Europe. Like I could come back to the U S and go to this festival, <laughs> you know? So I, um, I just got really intrigued and was watching. Um, it was kind of like the gourmet raw food camp. Like sure. David Wolf was there. Matt Marnock was at, at the place. Um, there's also people like Jazz Muheen at the place. There was, uh -huh. um, that I think maybe even Doug Graham was there and I didn't even know it because like <laughs> it wasn't on my radar yet. And, um, it, but, but I remember there's a, but I, th or maybe it was Brian Clements. I don't know, but I remember there was like some kind of controversy or something <laughs> about people talking about one style and another style. Sure. And, um, and so I went there and I was like, wow. And then I he introduced me to my first, family who I saw eating raw vegan and it was just like wow I almost felt like they were aliens like wow they, their skin was glowing and like wow this is so amazing like it's possible and so I just inundated myself with like testimonials I saw people doing juice feasts online like um uh Matt Monarch his old his what his former wife I think yeah you know, and, Angela Stokes and um she really inspired me and um I mean online yeah. and then uh I got Gabriel Cousins book spiritual nutrition which I loved and um yeah I just I, I went to Cafe Gratitude which is a raw food restaurant I just found out about it and I was just like really intrigued by the people that went there it would bring in all different walks of life of people yeah, yeah. into spirituality and stuff. And I was having all this stuff happen to me too. So I wanted to talk about it. Um, but I was afraid to talk about it, like all the spiritual awakening stuff too. And so um, I got so tired of hearing how good people felt. <laughs> and um, I just decided I have to try this. So I had, I had my raw, cafe gratitude book and then I had you know what people were saying on YouTube I heard you could make this one smoothie in the morning and you'd be good <laughs> which had like five soaked almonds and you put the banana and everything in it so I was just like okay I'm gonna do my smoothie and then I'll make something from the cafe you know gratitude book for lunch yes. and then I'll make a really really big salad at dinner and um yeah, I, def I was, and, and this is the way I do it. Like if I, if I do, I like to experiment a lot. 
So like, mm-hmm. I'll just take in one element and then not change the rest of my lifestyle because I want to feel what's really happening. So I was like, okay, I, I really want to feel what this raw vegan stuff does, you know? So I'm going to yeah, go all yeah. in as I, as much as I can, like hundred percent, as much as I can and stick to it for, and I was like, how long can I actually do this without like going crazy? And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this for two weeks. I'm going to commit to two weeks. And I did it. And I kept, it's funny at the time I was having a little espresso. So I still had like maybe one here or there. I didn't have it every day. Um, but the rest of it was hundred percent raw, hundred percent vegan. And wow. I felt amazing. Like it was like night and day. And I, and I had already kind of like started cleaning up my diet back to vegan at the time. So I wasn't like going yeah, from a bigger yeah. step. I actually had to sleep three hours less. It was weird. Doesn't wow. always happen, but at that yeah. point it did happen. And I felt like superwoman. <laughs> and I just was like, wow, this is a reality nobody could ever explain to you. It's something visceral and you have to, I had to live it. And because yeah. I had lived it and felt it, I just knew I wanted more. And that was my goal ever since then, just to get more and more raw. And, and I went that year, I probably got, I actually counted. I would count the days I ate cooked on a calendar in a diary. And I, um, I got six months, I think that first year I was wow. just like, but it took me really, you know, I was like, I did two weeks. Let's try to get a month. And it took me three attempts to get a month in a row, like 30 yeah. days in a row. Yeah, And then yeah. Um, I had to build up, you know, and that's how I did it. And I didn't have Facebook community. I didn't, I didn't yeah. do any of that. So I was just like doing it. And the only person I knew doing it and I would meet random people um, who are into sun gazing or something <laughs> like, you know, different things. Like I, yeah. I would meet people into different things that were alternative. And, um, and then I, I think in 2000, 13 was it was the year I was like I'm tired of being a lone wolf I want to and I had heard about Woodstock Fruit Festival the first year it opened but it it's funny how a person can feel like they don't they it's like out of their league or something well, like yeah. wow that looks so amazing but I'm not there yet you know like right. I'm not I don't, at the time probably had this concept like I'm not the beautiful people <laughs> like the the high energy sparkly people yeah right right or or just like it's such a big trip and like all this money and like yeah. is it, you know, can I spend that much money and then um so it's like I had to work through those inner beliefs and then finally in 2013 I was like I'm going I want to find my tribe like I'm tired of being a lone wolf and that was huge like that decision felt so good and And I had, you know, I had to test the waters first. Like at first I was like, okay, what is this? Is this like fanatical? (laughs) Yeah, sure. First year I probably was a little bit more withdrawn and had more of a wall up. And then I decided after the first year, like, no, this, this is real. Like I feel good with these people. Like I want to make friends here. I want to go out of my way to talk and, and connect. And I have some of my like really awesome best friends from, from fruit festivals yeah and let me so let me ask you about that and and first i kind of want to go back to actually to you talked about you went raw and you felt amazing is there anything specific you can talk about the difference with shifting to more raw foods oh for sure um let's see um my vitality my vitality went up like a rocket and then it went down after <laughs> Interesting. like yeah after many months of trying I could talk to you about that but that's my first 100 days in a row that's when I had huge detox um but the first probably five months of like trying to get a whole month in and like doing mm-hmm. it um I felt really clear in my head I felt my senses were more alive like all of them um my smell especially and my taste um yeah I felt physically the energy 
like I said, I have more vitality. I physically felt um, the energy running through my body stronger. And I also felt a lot of people talk about feeling cold, I actually felt really warm. And I felt in, and this happened the first time it happened, it was in like right below your belly button and your solar or your sure. second or third chakra. Like I, it was my third chakra. I felt, and I didn't even really know about chakras at the time. This is like what awakened me really to it. And like, um, I felt heat and like a circle, like I felt like a magnetic rod. Well, wow. it felt like a rod of magnetic, magnetic energy. And I could, it, I could feel the shape of it going through my body in that core from the front to the back. And then I also felt that a few months in through my heart, like it would feel like this heat and I would feel these heating sensations of like a magnetic rod. And it Amazing. felt, yeah, it was like, um, and I've had that experience also through my, my head here. Yeah. Um, on my temples. And, um, it was like this heat, it was almost like the heat. It's like a motor running. Like it felt like it was moving more. And then, so that's kind of like the spiritual energetic side that I felt. And then like the physical aspect was inflammation obviously went down. Like my skin was so clear. My body, my face wasn't puffy, you know, like, um, I, felt like my eyes looked more sparkly um my oh my stool and my whole digestive system was way like it already didn't really smell you know from yeah eating plant-based diets but then going to um raw it was just like it was funny it was greener so i was like what's going on <laughs> but it also like so smooth so easy in and out like p- people sit on the john for minute sure. if not half hour and i'm yeah. like what are they doing like are they that like to <laughs> me that's such a reality that i don't live anymore that i'm just baffled by um and it's funny all these little things like add up and they happen and then i don't realize it time around someone who doesn't do it and then like i'll see the different things how they're like like you can see people who eat meat like kind of like in their eyes um or their face has this kind of puffy reddishness yeah yeah um and i every just fyi like every time i did go off the vegan i never ate meat meat so <laughs> I felt like that was like definitely my like boundary line. Um, and when so you, when you went to Woodstock, so you went to Woodstock after, do you feel like, had you already worked it out for yourself or did you learn a lot there about how to, how to live on the raw lifestyle? I, I, um, I think it was about, 2012 where I, I met my first person who knew about Doug Graham right. and she told me about him. And that's when I, that's kind of, I think how I also heard about the festival and I knew I needed, all I knew is that I wanted to live this lifestyle and I wanted to live it long-term and I wanted to learn how to do it right. And I wanted to learn from people who did it long-term. I, I was, I didn't yeah. want to hear the enthusiastic one year, yeah. person who claims all these claims and you can live forever and whatever like i want to you know like i, I yeah. read a book that said you're gonna live forever um and yeah maybe <laughs> our soul does but <laughs> i um i want i that's what i loved about that's what helped me figure out something just seeing the long term raw fooders and realizing like the long term raw fooders eat a ton of fruit like yeah it's just like, that's the staple. And I don't think I knew to eat enough fruit before I went to the festivals. Like I, and, yeah, and yeah, before, yeah. like I first heard about Doug Graham, then I went to the festival and found out about a lot more people in the kind of hygienic realm. And like, you know, all the people who go. Sure. Um, and I actually really resonate with Alan Livingston because she does yeah. have a holistic perspective um and she's really down to earth and i I really resonate with doug like he um when i met him in person like he came up to me once and um i was playing tennis and he so like i just 
you know, it's also like their personality and, and actually I'm really grateful for just everyone who's presented there. Like, um, I really resonate with Chris Kendall's message. He's really holistic minded and, you know, it's not just about sticking to raw. It's also like being a good person and, um, doing things in a healthy way, like that create connectivity and, um, and what was it like being around that community? Did you feel that was different to like Burning Man or other events you'd been to? Was there something different about it? Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Each festival has its own style and whoever runs it, their, their energy runs through the festival. So like what their values are run through the festival and you can feel it, um, at least in my perspective. And so, um, oh, for sure. Burning Man's such a different experience. Um, first of all, there's no money at Burning Man, except if you buy ice or coffee. <laughs> um, I, I don't really want to compare them. They're totally, they're like apples and oranges, you know, um, that I think that within going to, okay, going, going to my first Woodstock festival, I had just been at a festival right before it for uh -huh. music called Shambhala. There was a lot of drugs, but there was also a lot of creep. Like you know, you can just see it in the people. Like yeah. people are taking a lot of um, hallucinogens and things. And but I love creativity. I love music. I love building and sculpture and fantasy and fashion. Yeah. Like you know, creativity. So I love going to that kind of environment too. And I love dancing. Um, and so I went from that festival directly to my first Woodstock, and the vibration that I felt at Woodstock being around people who were like really into raw vegan and a health lifestyle. It, I could physically feel it in my body. I got yeah. there and like, I got tingly, like my whole body got tingly and I could feel the energy of like this big group of people being really high in vibe, like a really yeah. high vibe. Yeah. Whereas like the other well. festival was fun, but it was like, there's kind of like this underlying low vibe. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. is, that, that is what keeps me going back to be honest is like when i because sometimes i think why do i why do i keep going back to woodstock and some of these events then when i turn up i'm just like i immediately feel it and i'm like this is why i come back like whatever this is and i know ex i know exactly what you're talking about yeah it's it's um yeah it i guess the only way to explain it is like this tingly high vibe <laughs> yeah there's yeah, something so, special about being around people who i mean i don't know if it's just because me or you care about um these niche kind of um topics or th you know sure uh, not hobbies but lifestyle and then being a, i don't know if it's because we're in such a little niche and then we're finding people in the niche and then it's like wow or if it's also the the actual theme of the niche, which is the health that also adds to it, which is like everybody's vibe is higher because they are physically and energetically like higher too. So I think it's both of those things. Well, it's really great as well that when you say you go to uh, like Shambhala or a big music festival, okay, everyone kind of, what everyone has in common is they all like music and they all like festivals, but that's kind of broad. But if you go to something like Woodstock, it's like you can speak to someone and you've read the same books. You've probably seen mm -hmm. some of the same videos. So it's really easy to get conversations going with people. And I think that really helps people to kind of connect as well at, at the more niche events. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so from there, what's, what was it been like? Has it been plain sailing on a raw diet? Have you been on and off? How, how have you... How have you dealt with it? And, and, and do you know if you've been able to uh, deal with the HPV thing? Is that reversed? Is that something that you're over now? Or how does that all work? Well, this is a virus that they say you'll have in your body like the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. It's just dormant. So if your immune system goes down, then you can test positive. And with my strain, mine is if you test positive, then you have to take another test to see if you have cancer cells. So that's the symptom of it, I guess. Whereas yeah, other yeah. symptoms are like herpes or different things. 
I just want to say 79 million people have it in America. Well, That's like crazy. <laughs> That's yeah. like so many people. Um, so how has it been? It's been like, I think it's been definitely a learning journey and no, it wasn't always smooth sailing. And I had one big moment where I really doubted it. Um, and that's when I did my first, it was within my first year of eating raw and I did my first 100 days in a row. And I, um, I kind of give myself benchmarks like that. Like that's what kept sure. me motivated to keep going. And, um, and what happened was, I lost a ton of weight. I was really underweight and I got really fatigued. And some of those symptoms are probably under eating calories because I didn't know. Like I was just. Yeah. Um, and then the other factor is detox. Like detox uh -huh. is real. And um, I think my body was like, because it's almost like fasting. You know, you have a detox. Like if maybe if you're under eating, like it's like dumping all, it's like okay, I'm going to use the energy to like, just get this stuff out. And so what happened was, um, I was really tired and I kind of lost my libido and like, I, I, and I also was, um, kind of weaker, but I was really alive in other ways. Like, um, and I remember going to my gynecology appointment and I remember telling my mom, like, mom, I've kind of like, I found the Holy grail. Like I'm never going to go to a doctor again. Like I don't want to ever do these appointments again. And you're supposed to do checkups like every yeah, yeah. six months or when you first have a positive test, you have to do it every three months to get three negatives in a row. And, um, and it's crazy because I was, you know, I felt good in so many ways, but then like, um, I, I went into the office and then when they got my test results back, I became, it was positive again. So I, oh, luckily I did not have any cancer cells. It tested negative for the cancer cells, but I was devastated because I thought like, I thought I was doing what was right for healing. Yeah. Like, um, and this is the important factor, like healing, you know, health is holistic. It has many facets, many, many spokes of the wheel, like, so you can't just get super attached to one factor. And also like, am I doing that factor right? Like, am I doing the raw diet right? Um, I didn't really have any resources at the time. So I, that I knew of like, and, and so I kind of, I luckily was signed up for this retreat afterwards that included fasting, but it was a spiritually based retreat. And I did a vow of silence for 21 days. And, um, and so what happened was I freaked out. I was, just, I was so, I, it's like my world crumbled inside of me. I was like, I thought I was doing what was right, eating this raw diet. And I've, um, you know, and then it's not working. I got this positive test. So I kind of freaked out and I was like, okay, I'm just going to go back to vegan. And I ate the same vegan things that I ate when I was eating cooked vegan. You know, yeah. I ate like, beans and rice and like salsa and yeah. <laughs> a bed of lettuce like and it and um the next day like I just my whole face was puffy and I kind of had hives like I think I had an allergic reaction to something but also like the thing that convinces me that my body doesn't really like um cooked is the energy level went down really strongly even more yeah. and I've done this experiment back and forth a lot but I also sometimes get kind of like mucus on my stool when I eat cooked food uh -huh. not a lot it's just like um I know that might be TMI but I I've done the experiment multiple times and gone back and forth from cooked to raw and like I always it gets similar results and I just know my body, I'm, I'm more into surrendering to what my body wants to thrive. And that's a process in practice in itself <laughs> to actually surrender. Um, so I ate cooked, you know, for two weeks um, or three, and I gained 15 pounds in two or three weeks. Like, yeah. and that's all water weight. That's inflammation. Like that's, yeah. That's the, and I wasn't overeating. I wasn't like binging. I was just eating vegan foods and my body was reacting to it. Like it didn't like it. And so, um, 
I think it's probably also the oils and the salt. And then like, because the body cleared out, it's like, whoa, it sees this contrast. Yeah. And, um, and, um, so I went into this fasting retreat, spiritual meditation retreat. And after like five days, I just felt amazing. Like my, um, even though I was underweight already, like from my body. Oh, and then I had gained the inflammation. Um, like I, f- I felt I had the energy again. It was weird. It like, I think yeah. fasting is an amazing tool to knock out. If like you're going through a detox, you can either go through the detox prolonged um, and keep eating raw uh-huh. and it'll just last maybe, maybe months. Or you could do a juice cleanse, which might like shorten the detox, or you could do a water fast, which like, which I have to say you have to do in a guided setting. (laughs) 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 But I mean, like, uh, (laughs) I don't want to like lead anybody on a weird path here, but, um, that after that, I got tested again after those, cause you do it every three months after that fast. And I stayed juicing for a bit after that fast and then, um, raw. And I got negative again. So it oh, knocked wow. it out. And the fast knocked it out. The eating raw wasn't enough or it just was, yeah. it was yeah. enough. And it was just maybe detoxing in it. Maybe the test caught the, whatever it is to detect, you know. Nice, nice. It's, it's, it's a bit of a conundrum because I've tried to ask people like what exactly happened and nobody's given me a, even doctors and they, and they can't really give me a definite answer. But all I know is that fasting is a tool that can really help knock out um, detox and illness. Sure. sure. And I've seen it to help so many people, so many people. And I've done, yeah, sorry. I was just going to say like, and you've you've started to share that story with other people, like you've started a YouTube channel and stuff, and you've started to, because you you didn't, I think you you were kind of like, uh, you kind of kept it to yourself for a long time, but now you want to share this story more. Yeah, I um, I've been wanting to share that for so long, and I was ashamed because I what had you know it's an std you know sexually transmitted disease now it's called an sti i didn't want to be known as the the std girl (laughs) sorry and also it's very personal like it's it's like there's a lot psychologically in that like if you don't have a partner will i will people be attracted to me will they be repulsed by me like you know, there's a lot of self-worth in it too, and shame. And I had to overcome a lot of that. And, but I feel like this information is way more important than that. It's more important than me. And I think people need to know it because fasting has gotten a really bad rap. I think recently, like people get afraid from it or, or I wouldn't necessarily say use it as a weight loss tool, but I think it's a healing tool. And I think it's really, you could use it. I think your intention is really important. I think having the intention for health is really important. And when you have the intention for health, no matter what you do, whether it's fasting or the raw food diet or a vegan diet or whatever you do in your life, you can learn to do it in a balanced way that aligns with your body and use in a way that's like peaceful and harmonic with your body. Um, so I started, I just started that channel. It's under my name, um, Tina Seuss, C S E U Z. And, um, kind of like Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad's a doctor too. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm still going through a process of like, how do I share my message? Like, what's the best way? I'm just learning the languages of like Instagram and YouTube and all of that. But I do want to share. And I think I want to, I want people to get empowered on their journey because it's, it's horrible. It, you know, it's, it's one choice to have that procedure done, but are you, are you going to have that procedure done multiple times? Like, are you going to, cut up your body multiple times and always kind of live victimized to this illness a person has or even any kind of health 
disease, like, yeah, you know, um, there's a way to do it that's actually harmonizing with the body. You can get rid of it and and stay healthy and keep long term health. And sure. I and I've seen um, no matter whether I'm on the, you know, doing a hundred percent raw or high raw or I've fallen off my path, like that doesn't say that the information I'm sharing is not true. It's true. Like sure. raw foods is a a game changer. Like it's it's way more than you feel when you go from vegetarian to vegan it's it's yeah. huge and learning to do it with people who've done it done it long term i think is really important and um and i think that fasting is something that is an ancient tool that you know there's a lot of ancient tools we have like doing a vow of silence or meditating yeah. or um fasting water fasting or juicing like these are tools that we have and, it, and I'm starting to wake up to the reality that we have a responsibility to pass it on and live it. Otherwise people will forget it. And if you don't do it and you don't share it, it's just not going to get passed on forward. And I feel like these are the things that humans, like not just this next generation, but many generations forward need to know. I think we need to know as humanity that these tools exist and they're powerful. Excellent. Well, thanks. Thanks so much, Tina, for sharing so much today. And uh, I think this will help a lot of people. And I, I'm sure people will want to hear more about you and, and follow you on YouTube. And that'll be great. Um, what are kind of some of your plans or goals for the future? Um, I, I know that you live kind of an interesting lifestyle, like, a, I don't know if you'd call it minimalistic or nomad or whatever it is you call your lifestyle. But what what are you sort of planning to create in your life and and you know what part are you looking to play Hmm. i don't consider myself a minimalist anymore um i currently um i recently like uh, i went in on a property with a woman so i'm called i i call it my space of love it's inspired by the ringing cedar series um i'm creating my home um hopefully I'll have fruit orchard and garden. I plan to do those and we're kind of just making a little outdoor kitchenette right now. And um, I really want to live in tune with nature. And I hoped if, if you really want to know, I think in the future, I really want to hold retreats. I want to share information like this um, in any way that serves. And I, I want to have people experience it. Like I don't, to me, we can talk about it forever, but in the end information is important when it applies to our experience. So I really want to, um, create like containers where people can do, you know, cleanses or experience raw foods or, you know, whatever it is, a mono fruit Island or, um, live in tune or just do like a, a day in nature not doing anything you know like stopping <laughs> and remembering who you are and um and you know get back to basics like get back to your body like really surrender and listen and um i'd really like to do those kind of events i possibly will do them in the future i i would i want to step more into an active mentoring role um while I'm still going hand in hand with my own healing and learning. And I, um, you know, I'm, I'm currently like brainstorming my business of like what, you know, creating a website and, and what I have to offer and how I have to offer, whether it's like a course or just the best way to share information to inspire people to um, live a holistically healthy lifestyle, learn how to use cleansing and fasting and, raw foods incorporate more raw foods into their life awesome. yeah awesome great well i encourage everyone to follow uh, tina and check out her stuff and check out her videos on youtube and uh, yeah thank you for joining us today tina and thanks for everyone listening and watching and feel free to share this with other people and um i don't know rate the podcast whatever whatever you want to do to support it and send it to someone else Uh, Thank you for listening and thanks for joining us today, Tina. Thank you, Ronnie. You're an inspiration. I'm so 
really, really <laughs> grateful for the work you're doing. I think you're doing an awesome job. Thank yeah. you so much, Tina. And uh, we'll probably interview you another time, maybe yeah. uh, find out what you're doing. And yeah, we'll, and um, thanks everyone for listening and watching. We'll see you in the next episode of the Love Group podcast. Mm. Bye, Ronnie. Bye, everyone. Bye.